PLO. Was that a creation of the Muslim Brotherhood? The PLO, well, originally there was co communication between the founders of the PLO. Uh, the PLO was founded by Ahmed Shukairi. But of course, the Palestinian Revolution prior to that involved the Husseini fa family, the Husseini clan. Uh, Abdel Qadr al Husseini and also Hajj Amin al Husseini, the notorious friend of Adolf Hitler. He was a yeah. guest in my, my grandfather's house and, yeah. and he wanted to destroy the Jews all over the Middle East. He was also the founder of uh, the two divisions of the Nazi war machine. Most Americans are not aware no. that the Nazi war machine composed eight divisions, two of which were Islamic. Oh. The, the Khanzer division and the Albanian division wreaked havoc, burned thousands of churches, killed hundreds of thousands. And they began to spread Islamic fundamentalism uh, to revive Islam. This is really one of the beginning births of the Muslim Brotherhood. Uh, the Muslims were very upset because uh, the, uh, the, the West basically clobbered the Ottoman Empire. Uh -huh. And so many were disenfranchised with the loss of the Caliphate. The Caliphate is the papacy of Islam. Without the papacy of Islam, yeah. there's, no, there's no Caliphate, there's no Ummah, there's no nation for Islam to unite them. The only way to unite them to, to, is to establish this Caliphate. Is that the prime goal of the Muslim Brotherhood, to establish the Caliphate? Absolutely. It was bruised mm. by, you know, when the Ottoman Empire fell in Turkey. Yeah. And in fact, many Muslims view that, they, that it will be a non-Arab entity Islamic entity that will revive it. Uh, so many in the Muslim Brotherhood look at Turkey. Turkey is great, uh, generating a lot of prominence in the Middle East to lead this axis in the future. Of course, the AK party won the election in Turkey, mm -hmm. led by Recep Tayyip Erdogan, which is an Islamist sleeper cell, if you will. So it's not only the Muslim Brotherhood that's the problem, okay. it's also Turkey, which leads 18 million people, the second largest army in NATO, of course. Well, now, one of the intelligence analysts of the United States government said that the Muslim Brotherhood is essentially a secular organization. True or false? False, because that's what they say in English, the Muslim Brotherhood says that. You have to look at what they say in the Arabic. I don't read the English. As far as I'm concerned, anything that's said about the Muslim Brotherhood in the major media is just a bunch of hogwash. I looked at the Al-Quds newspaper the other day, and the supreme leader of the Muslim Brotherhood, uh, he says that uh, pretty soon America will pull out of Iraq, America will pull out of Afghanistan, they will take their military, and the West will not be able to face the rise of Islamic nations. Uh, of course, uh, the Muslim Brotherhood's logo is Wa'iddu, prepare. Prepare for what? Mm. It comes from the Quran. Wa'iddu lahum mastata'atum min iddatin wa min ribat al khayli turhibuna a'da Allahi wa'ada'akum. Prepare for them of force to fight against Allah's enemy and your enemy to terrorize them. To terrorize Absolutely. them? Absolutely. Prepare for, pre preparing to terrorize. It's about terrorizing. It's about well, terrorism. What about Osama bin Laden? Is he in any way connected to the Brotherhood? Well, he was born from the Muslim Brotherhood. Let's face it, Zawahiri was in the Muslim Brotherhood. Islamic Jihad was born from the Muslim Brotherhood. Hamas was born from the Muslim Brotherhood. Uh, all the Sunni Islamic terrorist organizations were born from the Muslim Brotherhood. Council of American Islamic Relations mm -hmm. was born from the Muslim Brotherhood. It was born from the IAP, Islamic Association of Palestine. There's a smokescreen that's been put over the American people. They don't, we're not told any of these things. <laughs> all the um, Islamic major organization in America, all of them, no exception, are born from the Muslim Brotherhood. There is a litany of statements made by the leadership with their allegiance to the Muslim Brotherhood. They all pledge allegiance to the Muslim Brotherhood. And in turn, pledge allegiance to establish the, uh, the caliphate. caliphate. Yes, even if you look at Faisal Abdul Rauf, the guy who wanted yeah. to build the Ground Zero Mosque. Mm -hmm. uh, in the English, he says, well, we want uh, dialogue, we want peace. Uh, interfaith dialogue, yet uh, you go to the regular newspaper in the Middle East, you look at Al-Ghad newspaper in Jordan, what does he say? He says that Hamas uh, and uh, the Muslim Brotherhood, these are terror organizations, yeah. are the, basically the beacon of the sprouting of freedom and liberty. This is justice. 
So he really praises terrorism on the open in the Arabic. You can find the litany of statements. You can fill libraries on the mm. Arabic information of what these people say in the Arabic language. But when the interview with Der Spiegel, like yeah. the deputy uh, of the Muslim Brotherhood, he says, we want peace. You go to a Sharqiyya, an Arab news agency, mm. and he says, section two of the Egyptian constitution uh, that calls for equality between Muslim and Christian. Uh, who, what's, who is section two? When 95% of the population of Egypt is Muslim. In other words, they're going to change the constitution. And if you look at the statistics, whether you look at the Pew statistics, whether you look at the Gallup poll, mm -hmm. whether you look at Zagbi, the majority of the Egyptians want Sharia law. 84% of Egyptians want the killing of anyone who changes their faith from Islam. That's me. Uh, take 10% of Egyptians are Christian. That's 94%. Mm. Uh, so you could say oh, the majority of Egyptians want the institution of Sharia law. Do you think that this, I mean, they've abolished the constitution, the military is in charge. Do you think they're going to go for that now? I mean, the Egyptian people? Well, we have to look at the model in Turkey. Many people are talking about the Turkish model. Okay. It used to be that the generals in Turkey, the military apparatus, would suppress the Islamist party. Mm. They had the right to basically terminate the Islamist party. Well, through uh, uh, changing the policies and changing the constitution, they can't do it anymore. So once this happens, then they can control the military. So you're gonna see an era of say, still the same thing, a facade of peace, because the Muslim Brotherhood learned from the Khomeinists, it was bad news for them, from Al-Qaeda in 9-11, they said, well, we have to basically cover and cocoon ourselves until we gain power. So you're gonna to continue to hear that the Muslim Brotherhood is peaceful. So by peace, they will deceive many. Until they're, well now, what has this got to do with the Bible? Do you, do you see anything biblical about what's happening in Egypt now? Let's not forget, uh, the Lord comes riding in a swift cloud and is coming into Egypt. That's Isaiah chapter 19, verse okay. one. So when was the last time in the West? Well, today we'll be studying about how the Lord Jesus Christ is gonna come fight the Muslims in Egypt. It doesn't happen, but it's in the Bible. And then you look at verse two, uh, Egyptian will go against Egyptian. Uh, neighborhood against neighborhood. You're going to have a civil war in Egypt. Right. But Christ is coming to Egypt as well. Let's not forget in Daniel, even the Antichrist, it says Egypt and Libya and Kush, which is Sudan, uh -huh. will follow him in submission. So uh, they will be following the Antichrist in submission. Uh, Egypt is all over the Bible. Uh, it is a huge issue. It is a, a cornerstone because it is the crystal ball in the Middle East. Whoever takes over Egypt controls the Middle East, controls the Suez Canal, controls the choking points for all the oil flow. America will not, cannot have any more, uh, you know, supremacy in the in the oceans and all these things. So it's a major, major what issue. Do you, what do you think is going to happen? What, what is your forecast for the next four or five years? <clears throat> Here's what's going to happen. All right. What's going to happen is a domino effect. You're gonna see rebellions in Algeria, Tunisia, Morocco, Mauritania, of course, we've seen Tunisia fall. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, Rashad al-Ghanoushi and Nahda, Islamic Brotherhood, has gone back from London after being in exile. They're gonna start all this Islamic revival there. We've seen the rise of a horn coming from Iran. Mm -hmm. the Shia horn. Yeah. Of course, they're waiting for the U.S. to pull out. They will control Iraq. They control already Syria through proxy because Syria uh, is ruled by Alawite Shia government, yeah. uh, the Assads. And then they have Lebanon, Hezbollah in Lebanon. Right. And you have the horn stemming from Iran. Tip point of this horn is gonna be at the head of Israel. What we see now is a domino effect in the Sunni sector. Mm -hmm. If you think the Shia was a problem, mm -hmm. which constitutes 15% of the Muslim world, wait till you see 85% of the Muslim world. It would be led by Turkey. And this Sunni horn is going to rise and it's gonna be much bigger because Pakistan has 100 nukes already. Turkey is building its power. There is a contract even of uh, F-35s yeah. by signed President Obama of 100 F-35s, the, the, the supreme jet fighter of the US. We will no longer have air supremacy in the region if this happens. And we're seeing a rise of the Sunni horn. And that's going to do basically erupt in the future uh, in a war on Israel. And it's all about Jerusalem. Do you think the Sunnis and the Shias are going to get together for that? I mean, they will m make peace? Absolutely. Because currently you look at Turkey making deals with Iran, gas pipelines, yeah. with the CIS nations as well, which is the southern parts of Russia. 
Uh, and uh, of course, you have uh, uh, in the Palestinian areas, if you recall, when they were lobbing missiles at Israel, there was Qassams coming from uh, Hamas, yeah. there was uh, Katyusha rockets coming from Hezbollah, yeah. and both were carrying each other's flag. Uh, and of course, Iran supports both Hezbollah and Hamas. So you will see a temporary kind of get together, mm -hmm. uh, 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 you know, against Israel when it comes against Israel. Israel unites them. But what's going to be at stake also is Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia is going to be hit by Iran with a nuclear weapon. Let's not forget Isaiah 21 talks mm -hmm. about arise or Elam. Elam is Iran. The burden yeah. against Arabia continue in the context. The burden against the desert of the sea, a desert surrounded by oceanic water. And we have Elam arising and destroying Arabia. So, yes, Iran will have to have a nuke. Well, if, if the Saudi production goes down, the world oil will be in a total chaos. I mean, that will set in motion a, a domino in terms of, uh, of economics. Absolutely. But biblically, we know that the oil will burn. Isaiah 34. The burning of the pitch, it's absolutely in Isaiah 34 as Edom. And Ezekiel 25 tells us that God will stretch out his arm against Edom, make it desolate from Teman to Dedan shall fall by the sword. And it will be, go up in smokes. Dedan is in Arabia, not just in Jordan. Ah. So it's the entire Jordan down to the Saudi Peninsula by the Red Sea. And this is why in Jeremiah 49, 15, 51, it says, I heard the noise of her destruction at the Red Sea. Dear me, how soon do you see this taking place? It's going to be a few years. The first era is going to be an era of false peace because uh -huh. it's going to masticize itself as a peaceful element in the promotion of peaceful Islam. Most Americans think it's the violent version of Islam. No, the peaceful vi uh, version of Islam is what's dangerous because it's violent. Yes. It just covers itself, mm. itself with the facade of peace. And that's going to be more dangerous because that says that they can enter into the Trojan horse, and they already yeah. entered, sure. into the government, into the system, into the school system. In 150 universities in this country, you have Muslim student associations, all apparatuses of the Muslim Brotherhood, uh, and you know, professors, everything. And funded it's, by the Saudis, what I understand. The Wahhabist, yes, yes, absolutely. The Wahhabist and the Muslim Brotherhood work hand in hand. It was the Saudis that helped the, uh, the Muslim Brotherhood when Nasser persecuted them. They grew in Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. And of course, the despots now are being exiled to Saudi Arabia. Mubarak's in Saudi Arabia. And Saudi Arabia is the second most hated nation in the Islamic world. Dear Lord. This book, War, God's War on Terror, Islam, Prophecy, and the Bible, is worth... Is this available now? This is in, Absolutely. All right. Get them where books are sold, Amazon, etc. God's War on Terror, our guest... Fascinating stuff. You, you want to read it? You want to pray about it? And thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for having God me. God bless you. God bless you.